Hello everyone. So uh, I was analyzing and checking the .NET MAUI since months already and uh, well I started actually in the version 6 even before the version 6 is officially released and now with the version 7 I decided to make a small experiment and build a complete application, very small application though, uh, in order to test uh, load time of the app, rendering on the devices, actually mostly on the iPhone because the only thing that I do have at the moment is iPhone. Um, but um, I will use the also the Android simulator to see is it working as expected there. And I was interested about the general experience of building the code. Note, the application is already written, so I, I built the application and I'm going to show you the app later. Now, for all of you who don't know what .NET MAUI is, the .NET MAUI is evolution of Xamarin. And if you don't know what Xamarin is, it's essentially a cross-platform framework which has the main, uh, main features of a shared code base, uh, which is being you know, converted to the native code. So essentially you should get native performances, which should grant you the access to the native API. So this is pretty good, but be aware that each of those good points comes with a fine print. So you won't always be able to use the shared code base. You maybe have some specific code that will work only on an Android uh, platform or on iOS. Um, as far as I saw benchmarks, you know, native performances doesn't necessarily mean that you will have exactly the same performances as build, for instance, the app build in Xcode and uh, access to native APIs is relatively um, limited. It's, it's good, uh, to be honest, uh, the, the access of APIs, but it's obviously not uh, on the same level as it is on uh, when building really native applications in its own uh, hold, uh, home uh, you know, development frameworks. Now, uh, why .NET MAUI is so hyped and, and so so essentially um, it does provide improved architecture and uh, what I can confirm definitely it has a simpler project structure um, than uh, Xamarin does and uh, in my opinion it has a better resource management so for instance uh, before with uh, Xamarin you would have to struggle a bit more with images you would have you would have a specific project of iOS and specific project of Xamarin and then essentially you would need to kind of have the resources on both places which was a bit uh, redundant so uh, .NET MAUI solved that problem so this is really uh, heads off there. Um, anyways uh, before saying that this is actually best and, and greatest uh, tool ever I decided to really uh, show you the app how does it how does it uh, work how does it look. Now Remark to you, I do have uh, a bit of experience also with uh, Xamarin development, so yeah, I, I might have some, um, some um, could be even a bit more advanced code than, than uh, one could uh, anticipate in, in a first video. Now, as you see here, the application started, I have customized my splash screen, so uh, it is not that bluish uh, robot thing. Um, it is my own uh, screen and uh, you see the first page, the main page, and it's called YouTube. So um, to be honest, uh, this is uh, the countdown uh, before, because I actually did a commitment and I'm going to publish this video uh, on a certain date. And I really wanted to share my knowledge about this, uh, the, the Xamarin itself. So anyways, the application, the whole point is that you build an event and uh, the application will count down until that uh, that event is happening. So that's that's essentially it. Really, really trivial. But again, the goal was to understand the load time, rendering on the devices, and you know general experience. Uh, now, what apps the app does? So if I click on Manage Events, I will have certain events here, um, and I'm even changing the color based on the dates, and uh, 
yeah, if I choose a certain event, for instance, another event here, um, it will also have some, some counter on its own. And uh, one cool thing, if I, for instance, change the value here, it, uh, the, the values of this label is going to be automatically changed. Uh, what I also implemented is I added uh, here, for instance, a flag on, on the main event. And if I click save, small toast here is going to be shown and I'm going to be moved to the main page. So it's not really uh, the most exciting app in the world, that's for sure. But what it does, it does have uh, functionalities which are testing the, the platform and testing our uh, key scenarios. So uh, let me just walk you quickly through the code structure and uh, the way how I build this app. And uh, obviously, if you have uh, experience with building Xamarin apps or .NET MAUI apps, you can s uh, skip this part to essentially uh, to almost the end of the video where I will do the review application and talk maybe a bit about downsides and uh, you know positive things as well uh, But uh, let us just uh, dig in into the code a bit So the entry page here would be Maui program CS and uh, as you see here We are using the builder to build the Maui app uh, and then I'm saying that I'm using uh, the Maui community toolkit which is uh, essentially open source library to um, yeah, build a bit more uh, friendlier interface and they have even more functionalities than interface itself but they accelerate development of the of the .NET MAUI and Xamarin uh, apps uh, significantly. Now I'm using uh, specific fonts here um, for the yeah, app adding some debugging in the case that I'm using debug mode and then I'm adding specific handler for the uh, entry control. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about this entry control because it is something that is picking my mind since, uh, since I started analyzing Xamarin. Um, anyways, if you go down, you will see that I'm using also the, uh, well, uh, IOC container to register my uh, view models so in this case main page view model event overview view model and manage event view model and uh, yeah this is marketized quite heavily on youtube as something really uh, amazing and uh, you know i think it's actually quite quite good um, but in reality it is part of uh, you know dot net uh, since some versions already so this was more or less expected, but I will give it a hand to, to the developers and say, okay, really good job. And I'm glad to see this functionality because it, it does help, to be, to be honest, it does help. Now, uh, I show you three pages when I was uh, rendering the application or running the application in the, uh, in, in, in the simulator. And now I want to show you the first page. So the first page is actually main page, you know, and if I go to the main page, there is a backend code, content page code, uh, which I'm, um, you know, using to bind the view model to the binding context. And I'm doing this by using service helper. Uh, and this uh, is actually taken from the internet. I was uh, analyzing, uh, I had issues actually, this was quite funny because I had issues in a constructor of the main page to have the main page view model being injected automatically. This just didn't work for some reason. I, I don't know why, I consider it quite weird. Um, maybe it gets solved, let's see. But anyways, there is this service helper and then this service helper is essentially, um, you know, um, working to get me the, the services and then I'm essentially, uh, I'm able to, to get a specific service. In this case, I really want a main page view model. Um, and I'm using, I'm overriding the on navigator to method in order to, you know, uh, be able to initialize my view model. And in, uh, if I go to the, to the view model itself is relatively simple. So I have a specific model. So if I go to the model, you will see all the properties that are kind of, let's say observable properties that I'm going to show on a screen. For instance, you see that I have the name, the start set, uh, you know, the format, the date, etc. And I also build a base model, which has uh, set property um, uh, set property method as well as on property change. So essentially, this is going to help me uh, to implement notify property change every time the, the property change. This is 
how I'm going to recognize it. Um, and obviously the model is going to be updated. Now, uh, what else is here? Cool, uh, you have commands, so everything that you had uh, in the past. So my command is called on go to overview. And you will see here when I open the main page how I'm binding to this command. So essentially when I click the button, uh, the command is going to be executed. Uh, the, the functionality is very minimum, uh, as you see in, in the app. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just reading the events from the preference storage. So it's a small helper that I built as well to set and get the values from the preferences. And what I'm doing as well, I'm just serializing and deserializing data for a key. So really not uh, nuclear science here. And uh, the, the really, the, I was really curious how much will this, uh, how performant will this code be because I'm not using any uh, heavy code or anything like this, no, no big dependencies aside of um, a community toolkit. I'm refreshing the, the time every second and uh, that's about it. It's, it's really not as complicated and it's similar approach if I go to a next page. So um, people who develop things with, uh, with Xamarin already might recognize this, uh, you know, navigation way and uh, going to the events overview is, is very much the same. So if you see the backend code, it's going to be quite similar. And then the view model itself is going to have, uh, you know, oh, actually I'm on the, yeah, I'm on the overview. So I have here two commands. I have a constructor, certain, uh, certain code, nothing really exciting. So the code was actually changed here and there. So you might see some code smells as, you, as uh, same as you he see here, uh, the uh, warning about um, that Yasync uh, lacks the await operator. So essentially, um, it, it, it really doesn't matter. The, the code is not even checked in uh, to any source control. But um, yeah, the, the whole point is, is really just to test it. And uh, oh yeah, I'm, I have to register routes. That's actually quite important. So if you want to navigate there to the pages, you have to register the route so that you can go there. And then here it tells that my main page is up shell. And then if I open here uh, the app, you will see here that uh, there are some uh, yeah, resource management for stars and for colors. And this is, uh, you know, actually like this. This I didn't customize this that much. I think I even left it intact, at least the colors one, um, because you can define your color uh, colors. So it's similar to the to the Xamarin. I believe in Xamarin you you would defining this in a shell, but this one looks looks you know quite similar. So you have this uh, structure to to define your colors. You know how do you do. Uh, certain things and you can actually define styles uh, for certain target types or for instance for border box you button you know you can have this uh, default uh, default look and feel same as you can define the colors uh, based on the on the uh, mode so it's either light mode show this color if it's dark mode show that color so there was some effort there uh, to make things uh, yeah nice um what else yeah the resource management uh so what is actually pretty nice is for instance if you have this splash screen which i created and it's an svg uh if i go with the f4 you will see here that there is a build action of maui splash screen so essentially what you have you have a specific maui types like a maui font maui icon and then you can use those uh resources you you know you will really build them which is which is actually pretty, pretty good. Now, I showed you how this application run in the Android simulator. As you can see, it loads, it's, it's in a debug mode, obviously, so it's not really the fastest one, but it works. That's pretty good. Now, what the whole definition of .NET MAUI is that I should be able to, um, to build the uh, application inside the same code base, I will be able to use it with the Android, I will be able to use it with iOS. So let's try this. Uh, I do have a MacBook and uh, I actually connected, um, you know, I paired uh, my machine to the, to the Mac. And uh, here I'm going to use iOS simulator and I'm going to use 
let's say iPhone uh, iOS uh, 14. Now, I can uh, tell you already that, you know, maybe this deployment is going to take a bit of a time. And while this is running, I would like to talk quickly about uh, entry. So entry control uh, in, in Xamarin uh, was a bit frustrating because um, what I lacked there heavily was border of the, of the entry control. And also I lacked the corner radius because uh, this is something that honestly is 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 not 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 corner case. It is something that you can see in almost every application uh, that you know input field has rounded corners. It's it's really there. Um, and .NET Maui for some reason doesn't have that. Same as the uh, Xamarin doesn't have that. And what was interesting for me is that. Um, you have to build your own, con you have to uh, extend the entry control in order to have the borders on the, on the entry. And this was for me uh, a bit mind blowing. Uh, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, I just have to accept the fact that um, I have to build my own control and I did build my own control. But this is, this is something that I'm going to show in a separate video because um, it would be too much uh, to show it in this one. Now, as you may see, the iOS simulator is starting and uh, it's running um, really where it should run. And I'm getting a splash screen and uh, let's just give it a minute to see, is it going to work as expected? This might be actually a bit longer uh, a few seconds until everything gets to the right position. If it gets to the right position. You can just fast forward. I'm not going to edit video. And we get exception. Okay. We do not set up parent class due to invalid generic initialization of the assembly core simulator. Okay, so something something just happened, and uh, I can Google this up. And to be frank, I actually Googled it already, and it is known issue on uh, .NET Maui. So this was this was the thing that I didn't like that much. So if I just Google this out. I think you will be able to see the link here, and um, it tells um, it tells really that uh, there is no workaround that iOS is affected, and that people can reproduce this. And uh, you know, I, I I was still not able to understand uh, what is actually the, the the response of this. People are saying that this is completed, but. You know, it tells avoid calling mono metadata tape cache uh, hash on container class. You know, it's I didn't went too much into the details. What I can see there is that this is not really straightforward process because now I have to figure out how to solve this issue and this should just work out of the box. So what I can do is I can go back to the Android emulator, uh, simulator, emulator, whatever. Um, and I can play around there. Now, I, what I also recognized while building this app was this events overview. So you may notice in the, in the app that when I was clicking the button, I was able to move from the event, uh, from certain item uh, event here to the details. But for my first implementation was using frame because I, I used to work with a frame. Now, what I want to show you here is how this frame doesn't really work as expected because, you know, the frame, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's used to build maybe a bit more complicated controls. So you can build a grid inside it and then um, add some icons, whatever you can, you can essentially make your uh, control relatively rich. So as you see, Android emulator works as expected. If I click on manage events, I get my list, but if I click on them, nothing happens. And then I was free enough 
to find us even before showing this video and it tells me you cannot it's it's no issue you cannot tap with a frame and a collection view on android and um, what is what is uh, quite bad here is that i, I just saw this uh, before recording this video it was moved to backlog of, of uh, .NET 8 planning. So for the people who are not uh, familiar with this, uh, you know, methodologies, it essentially means that uh, I'm not getting the fix in the .NET 7. You know, highly likely I'm not getting fix in the .NET 7. And this is where my frustration starts because then when I went here, I saw that guys have, well, 2,157 open uh, items, open issues. Some of them are probably stupid and some of them are maybe just user errors. That's, that's possible. But in reality, uh, there is a lot of bugs in a .NET MAUI. And this is, this is a bit unfortunate because it's obvious that people invested a lot of effort uh, to build this. And I cannot recall that I had these problems with Xamarin. I was able to successfully deploy my app. My other app that I'm, that I'm actually building has another problem. The another problem that I have there is that my Ajax calls are not working there. So I get the application, but every time when I call the web service, it actually doesn't return anything. So I mean, it returns something, but uh, the UI doesn't change, which is super weird. Um, and uh, I still didn't find a workaround um, for, for this problem. Uh, because I just decided, okay, let me make a very small, stupid application. Let me try how this works. And if this works successfully, I'm going to publish this on the Apple Store. And, uh, you know, let me have my application there. And let's see how, how good it is. Although it's stupid and small app. This failed miserably so far. But I'm actually uh, committed to making this work. So I'm not, be able, I'm not going to be able to fix this, obviously, in this video. I'm not going to even try to do this in this video. But what I want to do is I, I will really go uh, for extra mile to make this app working. Now, what I think it could be a problem, it could be a problem that, um, as far as I know, .NET uh, 6 support on, uh, of MAUI on a MacBook was not supported. And... What I actually did, I installed this preview version of .NET 6 MAUI on my uh, MacBook. And my MacBook is M1. I don't think this is going to be a significant problem, but maybe those preview versions are not really, um, uh, you know, working very well with .NET 7. That's, that's, that's possible. Now, um, what is my plan and what is my goal? So essentially, I'm going to go really hardcore and I'm going to reset my Mac. And if this doesn't work, uh, then I'm going to reinstall my Windows. I'm going to really, really crazy on this one and I'm going to try to eliminate all the pot potential software conflicts, which could happen. And uh, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to try to build this app directly on my Mac and figure out is it working there so usually i would first go with this last thing without reinstalling everything but as my other application doesn't work well even if i build it on a mac or if, if i build it on a windows i'm deciding to go uh, from the from the fresh start and try to get rid of everything uh, unnecessary now when we talk about dotnet maui feeling so far so to be honest it's not great um, I'm aware that developers of the, the MAUI did really, really a lot to build uh, the, the state of the code, which it is today. But honestly, it's, it's not there yet. And uh, I don't know, is it from pressure of the business to release this as soon as possible? Or is it uh, maybe not, not, not the best uh, approach or maybe underestimating some of the challenges? But anyways, um, as you may see, even in the smallest application and in a, in a list of the items that are visible in a GitHub, it's just not there yet. And um, in my opinion, first of all, I hate, I hate the fact that I have to build my own control to show you rounded corners. And I'm going to start the emulator again because I, I just cannot comprehend that 
um, in, in 2023, I have to build my own uh, custom control to draw uh, the border and the rounded corners, which are actually visible here in this, in this button. Now, and this is for this, you see here, I have to build this custom because else on Android is just underlined here, nothing else. And I mean, it, it, it's really, it's really stupid. And quite frankly, if anyone from the developers is, is looking at this, you know, usually business and your users don't really care about dependency injection. They assume that performances are going to be good. They care about user interface and user experience. They care about, you know, they, them feeling so comfortable with the application. That's, that's what they really care about. They really don't care about the fact is, is your application MVVM or is it, I, I don't know, dependency injection there or how do you handle it? They, they really, really don't care about this. So UI, UX, not there yet. And by the way, when I was before creating any apps, in Xamarin, I got a wizard, you know, what kind of apps do you want? And it already draw a lot of things for me. So here I, I don't get this. So I have to do this all manually, but okay. Second problem is obviously bugs. Um, you know, there is a lot of them and uh, I, I'm working in a software engineer uh, as a software engineer. I, I know how much time this, this takes. So it will take uh, minimum, minimum uh, until, uh, you know, I would say even uh, version nine of, of .NET. So let's let's see. Uh, and and the third thing that that you know kind of uh, shows that that the team is actually trying to push uh, much faster than than they actually are able to to deliver is is the fact that .NET Maui delivered maps uh, in only in the .NET seven, and this this really is 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 quite remarkable because I was complaining about the entry field with the borders but in reality the maps just arrived as a specific uh, as extra package only from the .NET 7 and I'm like I cannot understand you know if someone if, if someone tries to build a framework that not on top of his head are uh, you know maps the, the, the user uh, controls, those kind of things. That would be the first thing that I would think about when I would be building the, the framework. But here, obviously, the first thing that you think is, okay, I want to have dependency injection, which is, okay, it, it is the way how, how they decided to go with it. Um, also, what I wanted to do, I wanted to, inter I wanted to add Lottie animation. I wanted to have here, if the date is, is finally over, I want to have some sort of Lottie animation uh, which is going to show me something, I don't know, some celebration animation or whatever. Um, they're not available there. I have to install, not Microsoft, I have to install some third party uh, NuGet package to enable uh, loading of the Loti animations. So um, also this, you know, the animations are, are, are something that you see everywhere. So honestly, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit puzzled why is this, um, why is this not, not here? And then when developing things, I would expect, honestly, if I would do on the project and if I would do right click here to have certain settings uh, like I had them before, like for instance, the, uh, the orientation of the phone, would it be like a landscape or portrait mode? You know, what, what, what will I enable? And I, I just don't, I just don't see this. Um, um, I can install, I, I can choose certain things from the manifest, etc. But for instance, if I want to change my splash screen, what do I do? I actually have to edit project file. If I, if I got it right, I have to edit project file. And then here there is a comment about splash screen. And then here, what I do is actually I change uh, to a resource that I want. And then I can specify color inside this uh, node here. And I'm, I'm just thinking, Really, it, it was it was it too difficult to add here uh, like a option to say okay, what is your background uh, of of the of the splash screen? And not to mention that you know it's SVG here. So um, yeah, uh, on on the good side of the framework, I have to say that having one project there is really refreshing and it's really good. I think this is this is pretty. Uh, neat way of, of building the projects and I hope that 
the team is going to be successful with this approach. Um, the another thing that I really like is um, I like resource management. It works really good, and uh, you know it's it's obviously uh, much better to 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 work with the um, with you know one image rather than with uh, at least two of them. Um, yeah, um, everything else more or less is is on the same page, um, and uh, yeah, the dependency injection it is helpful. I have to say it is a positive thing, but again, I was expecting this anyways. But um, kudos to that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, uh, one thing that was um, mentioned that it's going to work flawlessly as well was upgrade manager. Uh, it was announced somewhere in some video or some preview of of of, uh, of dot net. Um, yeah, I don't know. Some video was was uh, I, I was watching it, and it was said there that um, that the upgrade from Xamarin to Maui is going to be relatively simple. You know, you're just going to uh, upgrade some namespaces, update packages. The tool is going to do a majority of the work for you. You will have to do some basic things, but it's not even remotely this. So I didn't the tool. I actually never even I was never able to find it at the end of the day. You have to like change the namespace on your own, and uh, it's 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 super weird. It, it's super weird because at the end of the day, uh, your custom controls you have to change them because um, yeah. Anyways, you have to really think uh, well before you decide to go to .NET Maui. Personally, I'm continuing to build the app in the .NET MAUI. I'm hoping that uh, the team is going to be able to catch up and solve at least some of those uh, errors that are happening. And I'm also hoping that my rebuild reinstall of the Mac is going to do the magic itself. And I'm seeing that this video is already taking too much. So I hope that this was, um, you know, um, good enough for you to uh, consider or not to consider uh, .NET MAUI as your platform for building um, the your mobile app. And um, I'm going to, as I said, uh, I'm going to write, uh, create a new video regarding custom controls and then I'm going to let you know how this, uh, you know, issue resolving process uh, was going on. So thank you very much and uh, until the next time.